After about three minutes with the heat gun, you'll feel it. You'll notice it gets pretty flexible. I just want to do a little experiment. Let's test the efficiency of this system to drain water. Three, two, one, zero. Hey everyone, welcome back. It is March 3rd, 2023 in San Diego, California. And I am continuing to work on the steps I laid out in episode 50, which are one, to finish up installing the forward ventilation, two, make a template for the side of the boat, three, make some cockpit locker panels, number four, get frame C1 installed, and number five, install the port side of the boat. Now, as you can see, I got the pipes and other supplies I needed for the forward ventilation system. So I'm gonna continue working on that. And if I finish that up, I'll start working on making the template for the side of the boat. I mean, look at this. We, we received no transmissions. This is a consular ship. If this is a consular ship, where is the ambassador? All right, let's get to work. I begin by cutting two inch pipes to length using my oscillating tool. Not the best tool for this purpose, but it's what I have on hand. I assemble the system piece by piece and determine the necessary lengths of pipe as I go. My plan for the ventilation system's drain is to fit some PEX into this return band. The larger PEX piece fits perfectly in the clean-out hole the smaller PEX piece, however, has a bit of play inside the larger piece. I had seen a cool method where you heat up the pipe, place it over the smaller pipe, and quickly wrap it with a rope to make a perfect fit once it cools. I heat up the larger piece for one minute, and the method works perfectly. The two pipes now tightly fit together, but can still be removed. Now I attempt to permanently join them together with PVC cement. Just a note to people who are as inexperienced working with pipes as I am, this doesn't work at all. I'm using a mix of ABS and PVC pipes, bonded together with PVC cement. There are probably a few people watching that know plumbing and are mortified by this. However, from what I learned, these two bond together very strongly using this method. It's just not going to pass most building codes. But since I'm not doing the plumbing for an apartment complex here, I'm not even building a pressurized water system. These are just air ducts I'm really not worried about building codes. In fact, I plan to make some of the connections in a temporary manner so they can easily be removed if needed.
Having failed to join the PEX pipes using PVC cement, I'm making another attempt with Gorilla Glue. This worked very well. Next, I'm going to try and bend a gentle curve in the pipe using the heat again. This should allow the drain to turn 90 degrees to drain out the whole side without having to fit any elbow fittings. Unfortunately, even with my encouragement, it doesn't behave and forms an ugly kink. A test proves it still efficiently drains water, but I think I'm going to scrap this piece. For one, it just looks bad, but more importantly, if I flex it a little, yep, sure enough, it's cracked open. So I'm instead going with a half inch PVC pipe. I add some plumber's tape to make it a tight fit. Time to attach the pipe for the vent box. Four drops of hot glue will hold it in place while I add epoxy fillet. Okay, I got the first vent pipe. Fill it in, front and back. Next, I need to put on some fiberglass. All right, now I got two to three layers of six ounce cloth strips on there and some peel ply. Next, I need to carefully bend this overhead pipe. This will make it less visible from the cabin, allow for more headroom in the bow, and as an added benefit, any water that enters will more easily flow down to the drain. I rotate the outboard side of the pipe over the heat gun for about four minutes until I can feel it become flexible. Then I simply eyeball the bin to the angle I need. I've got some leeway here since the deck pipe isn't installed yet. All right, I'll show you guys what I have so far for this system. In a previous video, I drew a little diagram here and I talked about there being an elbow and then a T fitting with a drain going down in another elbow. But I found at my hardware shop this uh, what's called a return bend, I believe. And it even had a screw cap here so that you can clean out a clog. And that's perfect because I could squeeze a half inch PVC fitting in there to make my drain. So I finished glassing this on. So this will go on like this. I got my drain down here, and then there'll be a elbow fitting to another half inch PVC. And I've ordered a brass fitting that'll go in here. So the brass is so that um, I can glass it into the hull and there'll be no PVC exposed to UV sunlight 
which can uh, damage and crack this stuff. And then we have this riser. And you just saw me bend this piece up. So this is gonna go on here. And this goes up to the deck. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna do next is bend this down a bit up here into this elbow fitting. And then we're gonna have a piece going through the hull about here and the cowling will be on top. Now, one of the good things I have up here is that this pipe will come above the deck six inches before it has its cowling piece. And that helps if, uh, if we have a breaking wave over the deck. And then again, this is uh, an exhaust cowling. So it's gonna be facing away from the waves and wind mostly. So it shouldn't really scoop in a lot of water into this system. But what water does come in will come down in here and quickly drain out over the side. And again, this drain will be above the water line. Oh, my thank you to Sven Irvin for his March 9th video. People were concerned that this wouldn't provide enough airflow for me, but what he said in his video, which is linked in the description, is that he and a girl crossed the North Atlantic with um, a similar system, except instead of a five centimeter wide channel, he had a four centimeter wide channel and they got plenty of air through it. He didn't reference any complaints about condensation in his video. And if it worked, you know, in those high latitudes for that kind of voyage, I think it'll work great for me. If you're not familiar with Sven, he's 83 years old now, I believe, and he's building, by my count, his 12th boat. He's had 11 boats. He's either um, refit for sea or completely built from scratch. And uh, I'll list what those boats were here. So make sure you check out his channel and subscribe because he's been doing a video per day for over a year now, I believe. One difference in his system I know is that he likes to come from one side all the way down along the whole bottom and over to the other side of the boat for the cabin vent. And I like that idea. I wanted to replicate it, but ultimately I decided just to kind of save on time and money that I would uh, only take it this far. And I feel okay with this system because even if this boat's upside down, the new water line might be like right here and this pipe would fill with water, but it would have to come all the way down to here before it could pour down here and into the cabin. So I'm confident that this system will work really well to keep out water from the cabin, even in a full rollover. All right, next I'm gonna move on to bending this pipe down so that it can go in straight to the elbow fitting, and then we can get a pipe up on deck. So we'll need to cut a hole for that pipe here and glass one in. So I'm gonna get a move on with that. I'm gonna heat this up between here and here and then bend this so that this pipe and this pipe are parallel. But it's just gonna have a little bit of an S and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. A little risky, but I think I can eyeball it. After about three minutes with the heat gun, you'll feel it. You'll notice it gets pretty flexible. And then you know it's ready. And that looks about right. Now I'm just gonna hold it here a minute and let it cool that way. Let's see how it looks now. I think that'll do all right. All right, I've just cut the piece for the deck out of white PVC, and it wound up being 20 centimeters, about eight inches. So 15 centimeters of it, or six inches, goes above the deck, and then the rest goes below the deck to go into this fitting.
Now I've hot glued the pipe through the deck in place and did my best to make it level. It looks pretty good. And don't be thrown off by the mast tube because that has a four degree aft rake. Okay, I got four layers of six ounce cloth on my deck pipe and down below there wasn't enough room to do any cloth so I'm just gonna have to trust a good fillet. I have to leave space there for the PVC elbow fitting to fit on. I think what I'm gonna do is attach it here first and then rotate it into the cabin vent pipe. There we go. I think that works pretty well. I want to keep this removable so that I can just store it until after this bow section is painted and then I can install it because I can imagine trying to paint around this thing would be pretty tricky. And the only joints I have cemented so far are here and here. I think the others I'd like to try and do with um, some kind of sealant that's temporary so that this can be removed if I want to clean it or replace parts. Here's a closer look at the glassing work on the deck pipe. That came out just fine. And then I wanted to give you guys a view of how the system will look to me from up by the main bulkhead. Now, as you can see, most of it's hidden back behind frame C2. All right, check out what came in the mail. My two brass fittings. Now these will go on the two drains I have on the boat, which are slightly above the water line. One in the transom, which we'll get to later on down the line, but the other one is for this ventilation system up in the bow. And there's two reasons why I want to put these brass fittings in the PVC drain line. For one, the only part of this showing through the hull will be this brass, so you won't have PVC getting affected by UV light becoming brittle or cracking. And the other reason is that the brass will much better adhere to the epoxy and the fiberglass than I think PVC will. So I'm going to install this with some sealant and then eventually the joint will be covered with thickened epoxy and some fiberglass strips. All right, now that I've got my brass fitting installed and it's had time to cure, I just want to do a little experiment. Let's test the efficiency of this system to drain water should I take in water through this forward cowl. So let's install this. Everything's mostly temporarily installed. I haven't sealed everything up. So if there's a little leaking, that's not a big concern right now. I got a gallon of water here. And let's pour away and see. Try and start the timer. I'll start it at 10 seconds. Three, two, one, zero. Boy, I really get some good pressure there, but that's good. Yeah, we'll stop.
stop it there. So one minute and two seconds minus 10 seconds, that's 52 seconds. Not bad. And even without anything sealing the pipes, all these joints are totally dry. There's no water down here at all. And if we come around to the vent opening in the cabin, this is totally dry as well. Well, that closes the chapter on ventilation, at least until I can get the cabin all painted and then reinstall all those pipes. Until that time, I'm gonna take it apart and just store it in the garage. Now, when I do install it, I wanted to install them with some kind of temporary sealant. I was thinking of using a uh, silicone bathroom type sealant like this, just where the pipes go into the elbow fittings and such, but I'm not too confident that actually it'd be able to pull apart after that cured. If anyone has a better idea, please leave it in the comments. I'm all ears. A big welcome to Michiel and Dogen, my new Patreon members. Thank you to everyone who signed up there. Patreon members get access to a full build photo gallery. They watch episodes 24 hours in advance and more. Another great way to support the project is with the Amazon wishlist. I've been adding a lot of components for the electrical system lately. If you'd like to help by getting any items, just check the links in the description. And a big thank you to Curtis, a fellow Navy veteran who got me this switch for the electrical system. Thank you. I've also got the link down there for the t-shirts like this one, if you want one. And if nothing else, just leave a comment. Please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe. Thanks guys. All right, I will see you in the next one. Four dollars to make all preparations for getting on the way. Hey, yeah. Uh, Oh, we get back to your station, I'll have you...